Hey, hey, folks, just give me a sec here, getting set up here. Uh, I got the YouTube live going here. Uh, just getting the Facebook live going as well. Uh, want to get the Instagram live going as well. Looks that we got that going. Facebook's always the one that gives me a hard time. Anyways, welcome, guys. Um, hopefully, you guys are on here. Uh, good to see you all. We'll get started in about 20 seconds or so. If you'll just bear with me for about 20 seconds here, we'll get going right away. Just want to make sure I got the Facebook going here as well. Looks like I'm just about there. Instagram. All right. A lot of people on Instagram. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Rob, Nathan, Denis, Bujit, Andy. Good to see you guys. A lot of people there. I'm waving to all of you guys on YouTube. Good to see you guys as well. I'll get started real, real soon here. Just finishing up. What a crazy week. What a crazy week in the markets for sure. All right. So I'm going to get started here. We're getting the YouTube going. We're getting the Facebook going. So first of all, I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. Brings me great joy to be here today. We tried to spice things up a little bit for you with the backgrounds. Not much, but whatever. It's better than the uh, white basement background I had before. Got people on Instagram. Got people here on uh, YouTube. Got people on Facebook as well. Thank you all of you for tuning in. Uh, first things first, uh, it's I know it's tough out there. So today, what we're going to do, I want to answer questions, live questions. I got about a half hour block for this. I want to do some live questions. Uh, I'm also going to do, uh, I'm going to give you guys a recap of what happened this week. A couple things we want to focus on. Really, really uh, <laughs> crazy week, I'll say straight up. We're, we're now up 20% this week in the last three days. Uh, just a phenomenal rally here, midweek rally. Let's start by, uh, first of all, I think I, I watched my video from Monday and I think it, it turned out I'm, I'm a really happy-go-lucky guy. Those of you that know me, I'm positive. I'm always kind of seeing on the bright side. And uh, I, I thought my tone was a tad, tad too negative. So um, let's start with something positive. Uh, let's start with something positive that's happening in your life right now as a result uh, of, of this, of whatever you're going through in your life. So Give me some comments as to what is happening that's a kind of unforeseen positive that you didn't think would happen as a result of this. Um, am I seeing the comments here on YouTube? How do I see these comments on YouTube? I'm not seeing them. Am I seeing the comments on YouTube? All right, I put, I put a comment on there on YouTube. Uh, so here, I'll give you guys what's happening in my life that's positive. So first of all, um, the traffic to get to work. There's no one on the street. So to get from St. Boniface to Winnipeg is extremely, extremely quick. Uh, how about you guys? What else is happening in your life that's been a, a positive? Um, I'm getting to spend a lot more time with my wife. That's really, really fun. Uh, we're talking about things that, uh, all right, the YouTube chat is working. Good to see that. Uh, this is working as well. Good. Um, so that's kind of some positives. I know, you know, I, I wanted I want this chat today to be positive. I want this chat today positive. Randy's saying family. That's fantastic. You get to spend more time with family. I agree, Randy. That's kind of one of the things I said. More time with my wife, more time with my kids for sure. Although I've been working a lot of hours lately, but that's uh, part of the part of the business. Um, let's start right away with uh, Monday. What happened on Monday? So Monday, I was on here four days ago. First of all. Questions, the floor is open, guys. Please send me your questions either on Instagram, on YouTube, or on Facebook. Uh, I'm getting a comment here saying that YouTube is not working. Oh, we have our tech guy look into that. We're getting a comment here that the 14 day quarantine is now over, but still nowhere to go. Yeah, I think we're going to see some of that. The 14 day quarantine now is over, and people are like, oh, I, I can't go anywhere. What's the difference? I'm kind of quarantined, even if I'm not quarantined. Um, Monday, Monday, we saw. Uh, a really negative day. I came on here. Uh, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I certainly don't. But it's kind of crazy how we talked about um, what the, the reasons why we don't want to sell into this market, the reasons why we want to stay invested. And I had said opportunity cost, the cost of being out for one day or two days, the biggest day of the years could be your entire year's gains. I said, you know, it would suck if tomorrow we're up 12% and you were out. Yeah, I'm certainly <laughs> not a fortune teller, but Tuesday, we saw the market up 12% uh, in Canada, about 11% in the US. Yesterday was a continued rally. We saw another uh, 3 to 5%, depending on the index. In the index. Uh, today, another rally. 
Uh, the closing numbers were positive, very, very positive in the Dow, slightly less positive uh, in Canada, but still positive. So now we've had three consecutive positive days. It was funny, I was watching BNN earlier today and I saw the ticker symbol. Canada is now in a bull market. We have now rallied 20% from the bottom. You usually see those, those indicators after three, six, nine, 12 months of a rally. I don't think it's ever happened in this quick of a period of time, three days. This is probably the best three days ever in the history of the market, but it's also followed what is probably the worst four weeks ever in the history of the market. So uh, I'm just going to I'm just gonna keep talking a little bit about the week. In the meantime, please start sending me your questions. Feel free to ask me about the stimulus package in the US, Canada. Uh, feel free to give me your comments uh, about that. You know, which one's better? How do you feel about the stimulus package? Feel free to talk to me, ask me about the businesses, when you think they'll be open. Um, you know, are we going to be open by Easter? Uh, feel free to talk to me about the job numbers, um, you know, and I'll talk a little bit about all those, but feel free to ask me about the job numbers that came out, the jobless claims numbers came out yesterday. No, today, came out today, uh, both in Canada and the U.S. Um, question here from Louis, at 20% from the bottom equals what percent fall from the top? A great question. I believe we are about um, tw uh, 20, we were about 23, uh, it's between 20 and 25 from the bottom because what happens is once you correct, gaining that 20% back is not like gaining the 20% fall from the top, right? If you go down from 100 to 60 on a 40% drop, well, if you gain 20% from there, you know, it's not like going back to 80, right? 20% of 60 is 12, so you're only now at 72%. Um, let's talk about a uh, question here about the balance sheet. Uh, from Dennis. Dennis, how solid is Canada's balance sheet versus the upcoming recession and why or with so much employment or why so much employment? Um, yeah, the balance sheet, Canada's balance sheet. So Canada's balance sheet uh, is certainly not as healthy as, as uh, you know, the U.S. for sure. The reason being is that we have a whole bunch. Uh, first of all, we're, we're largely, I'd say largely deficitary. deficitary. <laughs> we're in a deficit. Uh, and the the Western Canada, like oil prices today, Western Canadian Select fell to below seven bucks. So that means less people buying, less people selling that product, less Canadian, less less foreign dollars coming into Canada. Uh, so it's, it's it's really you know, it's okay, it's good, um, but they're not going to have to print money. So they announced uh, yesterday. They announced yesterday that they will be printing uh, about a hundred billion dollars. Printing might not be the exact right word, but They'll be providing stimulus to the tune of about $100 billion in Canada. Now, $50 billion of that, folks, is going to be going directly directly to the consumers, directly to you guys via checks. Now, there's still some debate as to how that's going to happen. The, the thought is about $2,000 per household or per family or per, likely per family or per household. There might be more depending on if you have kids or not. Um, so that's going to be direct payment. Now, I have not seen yet. Uh, maybe someone can correct me, but I've not seen yet if if there will be a threshold where a certain percentage of the population will not get the wealth. Um, but they're going to be spending that that you know hundred billion dollars. In the U.S., the announcement came uh, yesterday. Well, the bill is now currently uh, been passed to the Senate, and it needs to get approved there. They will vote tomorrow morning. But that is a two trillion dollar stimulus package. Two trillion with a T. T, uh, trillion dollar stimulus package. So that's a lot of money that's being uh, being printed there. So generally what I like to do when I do the math for Canada versus US, and it's a, this is a good trick for you guys at home. Um, we're about 10% of their population, round numbers. So if they're doing 2 trillion, I generally want to see, you know, are we doing 200 billion? You know, are we kind of matching them uh, step for step with respect to the stimulus? And in this case, um, we're not we're not doing that. We're doing less than that. Now, there is ammo there. There's a lot, of, you know, I've read a lot of analysts. I've spoken to a lot of, of individuals with respect to the stimulus. And, you know, there's more ammo. We might announce more. You know, I'm speaking to uh, individuals today, like the job numbers. Have you guys seen the job numbers, the jobless claims numbers? They were announced today. So uh, in the U.S., 3.3 uh, million people applied for unemployment last week. 3.3 million people applied for uh, EI benefits, if you will. So that is, it's a lot. 
I actually have a pretty neat chart on that. I don't know if you guys are going to see this. So this is a chart here. I'll show it to Instagram. I'll show it to Facebook and YouTube. This is 70 years here of uh, weekly un un unemployment claims. This line here at the end is not, a, is not the end of the chart. That is today. 3.3 million right here. So this is the chart for 70 years. That is today. So it's, uh, it's definitely eye-popping when you see it like that. The number, the highest number we'd ever seen before today was 600,000, 600 to 700,000. So we saw five times that number today. Now, again, we've never seen anything like this. Like in, in 2008, in the Great Depression, people were kind of being laid off over time. You know, it, it wasn't, this is like all happening in one week or two weeks. So the jobless claims numbers, um, they're, they're, I, Staggering. They're staggering. They're, they're just, they jump out of the page like this chart, right? And expect more. I would say expect more next week. Expect more in Canada as well. We have 15 million people that work in Canada. 15 million people have jobs in Canada. And 1 million of them uh, asked for unemployment benefits last week. 1 million of the 15 million are not working. So um, the question here uh, with respect to the Dow surging, uh, another 1,352 points. Um, with respect to the stimulus, the question is whether or not the debt is surging because of this stimulus. So I think the answer is clearly yes, but there's two things that are happening there. So this rally is what I would call a relief rally. Uh, you may have heard that term. I, I've talked about it before. I believe I talked about it on Monday. I'm pretty sure I talked about it. I've been talking about it on global news every morning at 8.07 for a while now. There are kind of three phases to a crash. You guys might not like the word crash, but I'm going to use it because 35% in, in four weeks, I kind of define that as a crash. Um, on Monday, I talked about the relief rally. Papa Lou is reminding me that I did. Um, so the relief rally comes, this is the second phase of the crash. The first is the panic. The panic is everyone mass selling. Okay, so they're blasting their portfolios, they're calling their advisors. I don't like this. I'm out. And that is 35% in four weeks. That's the quickest we've ever seen it. The next phase is usually what's called a relief. It typically lasts, you know, about half the time of the drop, maybe more, maybe less. But it's where people are back in. People are starting to come back in. They're saying, you know what? There's some opportunities here. Let's, let's put some, uh, let's buy some stocks, right? So that's, that's the start of the relief rally. And then once you start getting movement on that first day or that first wave, you get the FOMO factor. The FOMO factor, uh, the fear of missing out, right? So people, they're now thinking, oh my God, I'm in cash. I was waiting for an opportunity and now the market's rallying. Uh, I missed my opportunity to buy. So they're now, right? They're, they're, they're buying. So this is what we're seeing. This is what I think is a typical uh, relief rally. To me, this is exactly what a relief rally looks like. And um, I, I think we're seeing it. Now the difference, the difference, this relief rally and 87 and 2008 and 72 and 2000, 2001, 2002, is that it's happening way quicker than anything we've ever seen. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. The reason is because of your phones, is because 24-7 news, is because of social media. And I believe it's because people are at home and have nothing else to do but to read and to get scared themselves about the market in the future. So the crash happened way quicker, and now the relief is also happening quicker. The third phase, and by the way, this is according to our analyst, uh, Tony Dwyer. Uh, Tony Dwyer, if you don't know this guy, he's a he's a Canaccord. Uh, his title is uh, I think he's a one of our. He's always on BNN. Anyways, he's he's a genius. Uh, he sent this note out to us Monday after the market closed, and he said there's evidence of a relief rally happening. So as I was talking about it Monday, you know he he was calling it. He was calling it for a bunch of reasons here that that he outlined. But by the way, on a quick side note. I'm so lucky to be working at Canaccord, to be working with some unbelievable. The people I work with, like Javed Mirza, the technical analyst, he called That's Bottom on Monday, sent a note to us. I'm certainly not a fortune teller. I'm definitely not. But it's really good to have a technical analyst. So he looks at the charts. An economist, Martin Robert, who who's kind of an analyst, and he, he, he reviews everything. And then our actual lead analyst, Tony Dwyer, all three of them communicating with us directly and portfolio manager who's making decisions on behalf of your money, being able to speak to those guys, being able to jump on the phone and you know, get the best input from the best people. 
Uh, it's something I've never experienced in my professional career, the level of support that we have here. And I, I feel so lucky. And I think my clients are lucky to have the level of support that we have in my shoes right here. So I'm thrilled to have that. Anyways, they called it, all three of them. They all sent me a note. And, um, you know, Tony Dwyer has been talking about this relief rally for a while. He called it Monday. It's happening now. And what usually happens after the relief rally, to answer your question, is um, there's typically a retesting of the loads. What does that mean? Yeah, it means at some point, you know, I think generally what will typically happen is there'll be a retesting of the numbers that we saw on Monday. So the 18,000 on the Dow, the lower number on the S&P. Uh, so that means, you know, expect volatility for the next while. Um, let's get to Simon uh, Simon's question here. China is now expecting a second wave of COVID-19. Is this reflected in the current pricing? Remember that everything is reflected in the current pricing. Everything. The market is a complete reflection of everything that is happening currently, emotions in the market globally. Everyone is a buyer or a seller. You're on one side of that ledger. If there are more buyers, markets go up. If there are markets go down. Uh, so there are times when I think the market is not properly pricing things in. In times of panic, the market is not properly pricing things in. And in times of euphoria, the market is not a proper reflection of what's happening. Um, so to answer your question, maybe it's not properly reflecting it in. But this is we're doing a relief rally right now. And so we're everyone's buying. Nobody really cares. Everyone's just buying. So um, it's good. Trust me, guys, this is good. That means we're closer to this than we were on Monday when we talked here. So on Monday, we were talking about, you know, how low can this go? And we were I was incredibly optimistic uh, that, you know, things were coming back. Uh, we talked about the Canadian dollar as well. Uh, I do want to ask you guys um, any thoughts today about the Canadian dollar, either on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. I was asked on Monday, the dollar's at 68.5. What do you think long term? And I actually pulled up the email from Martin Robert, another one of the best on the planet at this. He, he called it perfectly. Like I, I, I'm blown away. I read his comment. He said, we expect a short-term bump. Canadian dollar is oversold right now. It is at 68.5. We expect a short-term bump over the near future. And then long term, we think the USD will be stronger. Well, what did we see in the last three days? We saw three cents on 68, four cents on 68. So that's about 5% um, in three days, just on the Canadian dollar. So um, question here from Michel, uh, near zero interest rates, what happens to bonds if interest rates go up? Great question, Michel. Um, now this, I'm gonna get into some complicated stuff. So hopefully I don't lose you guys. There is a reverse correlation to the price of bonds and interest rates. So when interest rates go up, your bond that was previously yielding 3% is worth less than it was now because you could buy a bond in the market that's yielding 4 Therefore, when they trade in the secondary market, you're not getting full value for your bond. Reverse correlation. If interest rates go down, the reverse happens. Your bonds are worth more. So during this past period of time, as interest rates were falling, in theory, bonds should have been worth more. But what we saw in the real market, you guys saw it, everyone saw it, is that bonds got wiped out as well. People are selling bonds, debentures, preferred shares like we've never really seen. And even those ultra safe assets have fallen quite a bit. If I think the stock market, here's a question from Derek. If I think the stock market will drop again, do we not sell today? Good question. Uh, first of all, the market is closed, so you can't sell today. Uh, second of all, I'm going to make the same point I made Monday. The, mo the point I made Monday is that the opportunity cost of you being out of the market right now is so expensive that you cannot afford to do it, and it's too imprudent. It's not prudent for you to do so. On Monday, I said, imagine, you know, you're not feeling great today and you sell everything. You sell your portfolio Monday when we were on, you guys and I were on here on Monday. You sell your portfolio and you go, you know what? I'm just going to sit a day or two out. I'm, I'm not feeling so great about the portfolio. The next day you're up 12. Are, are you buying that day? No, you feel bad, right? You're like, ah, made a mistake. You know what? I'm just going to wait for it to come back. It's going to come back and then I'll just buy back. Then you're up five. 
then you're up another four. Now you've missed 21% of returns in three days. And you, that's like three years worth of returns for some people, three years worth of returns in three days. So the opportunity cost, I use the words opportunity cost. And, and one of my good friends sent me a note Monday night. He said, thank you for explaining to me opportunity cost. Paul, he sent me an email. He said, thank you for explaining opportunity costs and why we don't sell. I, I didn't get it. I was thinking of selling, but thank you. The opportunity cost, Derek, to answer your question, is the same today, right? We think this is a relief rally. You sell today. What if you sell all your stocks? You're like, you know what? I'm, I'm only 25% down on my stocks. I'm going to wait for it to go another 10% and then I'll rebuy everything. That's great in theory. But what if we get a kind of natural, natural progression back to the norm where people slowly get back to work, markets are kind of stabilizing, they go sideways for a bit. And then over the next year or two, they just slowly come back to par, or slowly come back. Well, now what? You're sitting in cash. You've lost that dividend. The dividend yield right now on some of the, the, the high dividend stocks is extremely high, right? We're talking some are five, six, seven. Some of the, some of the uh, sectors I talked about Monday we're yielding eight, eight and a half percent. So you missed on that. Plus you missed out. On so we don't think it's prudent investing to try to simply play, try to simply play or to try to simply gamble that the market will correct. Now you can do some tact tactical shifting. You can start to look at, uh, at stocks in your portfolio that have kept their value. You know, there are some consumer discretionary stocks that have done really well. Um, you know, some of the grocery stores have done really well. They're still really high. Maybe you could consider, you know, sector rebalancing where you would trim something that's kept its value and you would buy something that's fallen a lot and you remain invested in equities. That's possible. I'm not advocating for that. I don't know your personal situation. And as a reminder, folks, you know, I don't know who you guys are. I, I, this is not investment advice. So do not take this as investment advice. Uh, I'm here to answer questions about the market, but I'm not here to give you personal advice on your situation. Um, question. Uh, question here on from from uh, Rodney. Rodney's asking about long term bonds if they're going to be a disaster. Uh, well, if you're if what you're saying is as interest rates, you know, you think interest rates are going to go up further. Um, yeah, that's not going to be good for bonds long term. But remember, we're you know, I'm not going to try to prognosticate interest rates. But Rodney, for you to to be to be saying that interest rates are for sure going to go up in the near future. People have been saying that interest rates are going to be going up for 10 years, 10 straight years. They've been saying interest rates are going up and interest rates have not gone up at all. Um, I think we're going to, we're going to see negative rates. You're going to see a period of time where you're going to go to the bank at some point, uh, And you know, you're, you're going to be in a position where you're going to have to pay to leave your money at the credit union or the bank. That makes sense, you guys. Have you guys ever contemplated a negative interest rate scenario? Um, anyways, it, it's likely coming before we see interest rates going up. But good question, Rodney. I got a question over here from Randy. Um, will the massive stimulus lead to higher taxes? It's inevitable. I mean, the massive stimulus, the money has to come from somewhere. Canada, you know, we live in we live in a fantastic country. We take care of each other, so that means that our taxes are going to pay in the future. We're going to have a bill. We're going to have a bill this year. It's either going to be a hundred billion or 200 billion or 300 billion, however much it costs us this year and next to pay for the, the job losses, the small businesses, um, you know, the hospital increase, the expenditures, the EI, um, to bail out any industries we need to bail out. Someone's going to have to pay for that and it will be us. So I don't know exactly how we're going to structure that. It's likely to be, you know, tacked onto our deficit and just, you know, we're going to pay for it over the long term. Um, but yes, yes, Randy, to answer your question, we will be paying for that in the long term. Uh, as a society, as a crew, uh, likely the higher income earners will, will likely, you know, pay a larger portion of that. But uh, just like it is, is now, higher income earners are getting taxed 50.4% in Manitoba. Lower income earners are getting taxed less. So uh, I got a question here from Claude. Uh, not my father. Uh, hopefully he's not watching this, but he probably is. Uh, is it time for opportunity now? So um, again, if you have cash sitting on the sideline, 
If you have cash sitting on the sidelines and you're not sure what to do with it, first of all, call your advisor. Second of all, take a look at some of the sectors that are that are take a look at some of the sectors that are beat up. Okay, so there are some sectors um, that have fallen more than others and are likely to recover. So I, you know, I, I talked about some of them on Monday. Some of them are still potentially, you know, and, and I'd say be ready to invest a portion of that money. If this is money that you don't need, if this is money that is, is, is you know, you're not going to need for the foreseeable future, your job is safe and you have cash or you have a maturing GIC, uh, I, I'd strongly consider taking a look at putting that money to work. Maybe you want to put some of it now and you want to put some of it, keep some of it um, for a, a potential, you know, end to the relief rally, if you will. Um, stimulus package, a question from Facebook here, is the stimulus package going to affect the Canadian dollar in the short term or the long term? So it'll affect it both. The end, at, the end, at the end of the day, the Canadian dollar will move. If there are more buyers of Canadian dollar, Canadian dollar will go up. If there are more sellers, it will go down. I said on Monday, our view was that long term, there will be less buyers of Canadian dollars for a few reasons. One is that oil is at seven bucks. And two is that, you know, we are in a state of serious, serious uh, deficit and we have a trade deficit as well. So those two together are typically not good for currency. So long term, our stimulus package is going to cost Canadians. Uh, we will be seen as a less kind of safe country to invest. Mind you, I think all countries are going to have to go through this, not just Canada. So uh, long term, I think the U.S. dollar, we, we said on our note on Monday that long term, uh, our analysts said that long term, the U.S. dollar uh, will likely appreciate over the Canadian dollar. Uh, question here from, uh, and I'm just going to wrap it up in a little bit. I had given about a half hour for today. I uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss any of the important uh, stimulus packages, technical balance. Oh, the, the um, mortgage deferral requests. So on Monday, guys, we're, we're going to be live again, and I'm going to take a look at the mortgage deferrals, interest rates, what's happening to credit card debt, what's happening to all of that fun stuff. Um, I'll take, uh, <laughs> there's a question here from Joel. What happens if the U.S. starts stationing its troops at our border? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that one, Joel. Uh, I like to think that we, are, we have the largest uh, unmilitarized border on the planet, and it will continue to happen. If we get to the point where we're debating that, you and I can have a further chat. Uh, once this core uh, coronavirus is over, will the economy take off in a positive sense? Yes, absolutely. But more importantly, the stock market will start rallying before we're done with this coronavirus. So at some point, there's going to be a sense of relief that we are we are over. We're going to be over the. Um, I guess we'll be over the hump. We'll be over the curve. We flatten the curve. And I don't know when that's coming. Uh, you know, who knows? I'm not going to prognosticate on when the curve will be flattened, but I know we're doing, I feel like we're doing a lot in Canada and, and across you know, on this planet to, to get there. And once that curve starts flattening, that's when there'll be some positive sentiment around the market. Right now, nobody wants to be, uh, long-term, nobody wants to be invested in the stock market because there's so much uncertainty. Uncertainty will continue. To breathe fear and fear brings stocks down. So once we clear up the uncertainty, to answer your question, um, Claude, about uncertainty, once that uncertainty clears up, nothing the stock market hates more than uncertainty. So whenever you have you know a company that pulls back their, their earnings guidance or anything like that, ooh, bit of a warning sign, right? Ooh, ooh, that's not good. The stock will drop, right? So right now there's a ton of uncertainty and uh, that's what we're seeing. Um, Anything else here, guys? That's on your mind. Um, it's it's been a it's been a crazy week. Never in my mind did I think that on Monday I'd be on here uh, telling people, you know, stay invested. You don't want to miss a rally. And three days three days later, I, three days later, I'd be here saying, you know, hey, that was a rally. Twenty percent. Uh, it, it feels a lot better, doesn't it? It does feel a lot better. Uh, you look at your portfolio and you're thinking, okay, I'm feeling better. But also, don't, don't forget, don't forget that. It, we're not we're not done, and I'm I'm sorry to say this. There's gonna be volatility. There's gonna be more volatility. There's gonna be some up days. There's gonna be some bad days. Um, expect the volatility. Expect the volatility to continue. And I'll say this: behavioral finance tells you that if you are invested long term, and if you trust your asset allocation, and if you trust your investment advisor, it is not a healthy thing to do to check your investment portfolio 
five, 10, 15 times a day. Um, in fact, I would suggest if you trust that your asset allocation is right, if you trust that your advisor is making the right decision, if you trust that you have your investment horizon is accurate, you don't need to see the day-to-day -day gyrations of your portfolio. That's behavioral finance 101. Um, guys, I appreciate you guys coming in, taking the time. We'll be back Monday at three o'clock. Monday, we're going to talk um, mortgage deferrals. We're going to talk what it actually means for the consumer. I'm likely to have a guest on my show. Uh, if you'd like to make some suggestions for me for guests, uh, happy to happy to happy to consider bringing on some other guests. Um, Ken, thank you. Joel, everyone on YouTube, everyone on on uh, Facebook, everyone on Instagram. I'm incredibly thankful that you guys tuned in. If you are a client and you're unsure, please uh, reach out. I will see you guys Monday, 3 p.m. Central Time after the weekend. Uh, in, in the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Play some board games with your kids. Uh, do the best you can to stay sane, folks, because we got a lot of weeks coming up of this, um, and we're going to need our sanity to navigate this market. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.